Okay, so I'm going to talk about the observer with a focus on tiredness today <clears throat> and exhaustion. Okay, so the thing with the observer, well, and I'm just going to repeat the thing, because sometimes repetition is good with spiritual learning. Like a, a mug is an object. That which observes the mug, the witnessing or the observing of the mug, now notice that a mug, for most people, is a neutral or meaningless object, i.e. it's not got a huge amount of history, it's not, it's not an object of addiction uh, for most, you know, for 99% of the population. Now when, when, there's an, when there is an object in, in front of the witnesser, what happens is one, and I ask, is anybody in the room or anybody who's watching on YouTube uh, a mug? like 99.99% of people say they're not the mug. They, they'd say they would not have confusion that an object being observed is, what they, is the essence of what they are. So that's the, that's the mug. And now with that, you, you, now these, this is, the observer is experiential. It's not using your head. So notice when you're observing an object, you know, there might be a mug, there might be a plant, it might be a cloud in the sky, it might be a geranium outside. You know, there's, when there's witnessing of the geranium, it's, there's what I call space between the observer. There's clear distance and space. It's like detached observing, one way to say it. And if I say, are you the geranium or are you the mug or are you the cloud in the sky? No, because it, it's, known, it's known that the essence is not the object. The essence of what you are, that is observing objects out there, is not, is not connected. It's not like, no, I, I am a cloud, I am the mug, I am the tree. That, that, there's that clear witnessing. Now, this is very, very important. And also, then, the other thing to recognize with a mug is it's, generally speaking, a meaningless object, meaning that there is detached space between it. Okay, so the next, we're going to, well, okay, well, the next thing, of course, is, uh, we should go to this because it's one of the biggest addictions, is, the next, is to talk about thoughts. One of the most extreme uh, addictions to humanity mm. is the addiction to thought. Um, and I'll just repeat, uh, for any Course in Miracles students, one of the first lessons in A Course in Miracles is all my thoughts are meaningless. So when you're doing, when you're doing The Observer, uh, and I, I picked the mug on purpose because I'm hoping most people find the mug meaningless. Um, is for most people, thoughts is probably the biggest addiction out there. Um, and it, from the thoughts, other addictions can stem. Now, if thoughts, uh, so, but anyway, let's uh, let's get out of the thing. Thoughts are passing by. Thoughts. The nature of thoughts is object. Because each, each thought is like, it's, it's different. You know, the thought passes by in mind, you know, the, the, the mug is, is white, or the cloud is grey. So obviously, something, there, there are objects passing by, just like if you are watching a movie and seeing characters pass by. You can only know that a character has passed by if, it has, if, it's, if it's an object, if it has form. If there was a, if there was a white... Um, where am I going with it? If there was a white character on a white screen passing by, you wouldn't notice anything. The observer wouldn't notice that anything had happened, register anything. But if a thought passes by, they said, look, what are you thinking? And they said, well, I was thinking that the sky is blue. Okay, well, what witnessed that thought go past? The sky is blue. Ah, so the, the observer can't be the, the object that passed by. Now, most people, uh, when, now, what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm not, giving you intellectual fodder to think about. So if thoughts which are objects, it's very clear that they're objects because each one is different. And you can have a sentence out of it, describe a whole story or a novel. So what is seeing the change of form passing by in consciousness? So is there a witnessing of thoughts? Okay. Now if, now if, you, if you can go straight to the witnesser or the observer of thoughts, then it'll be quite clear that that is a spiritual awakening, to have one experience that that which witnesses thoughts, um, the witnesser of thoughts, as soon as you do it, the more often you're in the witnesser of thoughts, the easier it is to drop the thoughts. You might get lost in them because there's a, 
an interesting special thought that somehow comes into consciousness and hooks you in into the field of thoughts. But generally, the, the more you go into the observer, the easier it is just to be in the observer. Because you, it's like, it is very similar to, uh, I'm a hypnotherapist, like it, when you go into a cinema, um, you, get, you go into hypnosis and you get so absorbed in the screen that you, you, you're in the movie. And if someone just nudges you next to in the cinema and says, like, it's a movie, just, just observe, you're just observing it, it's not real. That horror character is not real. And then suddenly you know, oh, it's not real. And then you're back in the observer's position. And that's the same thing. The more often you know, you, you practice being in the witnesser of thoughts, it's easier to break that being in the... You, you know the difference between being the addiction of thoughts, I am my thoughts, than being the witnesser of thoughts. The thoughts are not me. They just pass by. But there's nothing to do with the essence of what I am. So just being the witnesser, and then you just drop the intellectualizing. Forget the intellectualizing. So that's the most important thing, because that's the biggest addiction, to just suddenly go back and intellectualize what the process is. Um, now, OK, we, well, I'll, I'll do the body, because it's also another quite a strong... Um, yeah, we'll do the body. Just in, So the body is an object. I think this is a fun one. You know, the body is an object. Are you aware of the body right now? Because if there's a sense of body, you know, oh yeah, my body's about here, and it's located here, and it's about here, and if you've got aches or pains or tiredness. But that's an object. Your awareness of the shape of the body is an object. So what's observing that? What is observing the cylinder of the body? Don't do it intellectually, don't go into your thoughts. Is there a witnessing of the, the height and the thing? As soon as you flip into that, that's a spiritual awakening. Now, now you know you're not the body. What happened is you hooked into the body, and then you lost the ability to be that which observes the body, and is not the body. Okay, so if you hook into something, the reason that hooking in or attachment happens is because there's, there's a field of interest. You know, nothing hooks into the meaningless. There are so many meaningless things that pass by in consciousness, you don't register in the day. It's just too meaningless and too boring to even be an event that's registered in consciousness. You know, like people who are not interested in yellow cars won't notice a yellow car for the whole day. People who are not interested in thoughts stay in the, th the thoughtless now. You know, there are people who have, have done so much on the uh, re releasing the addiction to thoughts because they're useless, they have no meaning. They take the trust of their spiritual guides that thoughts serve no purpose. All thoughts that originate out of the self-center, you know, that addictive energy going to there's me, the big me, you know, they start to go, they, they're going to the thoughtless now and, and what comes through them is not from that place of just being addicted to your thoughts. It comes from somewhere else, from the infinite field but not from the limited field of the addiction to thinking. I wasn't, I wasn't saying anything intellectual, so I hope you didn't hook into that as being interesting. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, all right, all right, I'll, I'll, cut, I'll cut the intellectual crap. And, um, okay, tiredness. Tiredness is one of my favorite things to talk about. And if anyone's tired, what, you know, in the room, or if there's anyone on YouTube, in the, um, watching on YouTube that's tired, I think this is the most fun one to do. Because notice that tiredness is what I... Now, I, I'm going to describe how I experience it. I think a lot of people do, even though people may have different variants of this. But just, I'll, I'll share from my own experience. Tiredness for me is like a, it's like a fog. It's like a, it's like a fog that comes upon me. And it's like... A, and there's suddenly like something that wants to drag me into a heavy fog. Uh, that's how I experience it. You might experience it slightly different. It doesn't matter. So notice that... So the way to know that is to know that the fog is an object. The fog is an object. Something, you know, you know like when, um, if suddenly this, it became very foggy in London, it can sometimes do that, um, something is observing the fog, that it's foggy now. Yeah? And when the fog goes, something observes that the fog has gone. So even when there's fog here, there, the observer is still here, and it's not the fog. So the first thing to know is that the reason one is tired is because one is buying into the fog, one is attached, one has given meaning to the fog, and now one is in the fog. Once you're in the fog, you lose the consciousness of the observer. 
and then the fog becomes solid and real. The more you're in the fog and you have no, you're not in the observing of the fog, the more you get pulled down, it's like I'm going to go to sleep, I've got no energy, I'm so tired, I, you know, these thoughts start to come up <coughs> exhausted. But realise, no, fog is an object. So there is, there is a witnessing of the tiredness. Now, now so B, B now, you, you have to like, keep doing the exercise, it's not a mental exercise, what's witnessing the fog? Notice when there's, note it now, one way to crack it, and you keep doing this, is to know that yesterday you weren't tired, or a week ago you weren't tired, and now you are. So the tiredness, and whatever symptom it is, is now here. But then something is, the knower of tiredness is not tired. The witnesser of tired is not tired. The observer of tired is not tired. So what's happened is you've hooked in to the object. It's like someone complaining they're a mug and they've lost, the, they've lost their, their, their infinite self of knowing they are the witnesser of a mug, but they can't be the mug. You know, one can witness a symptom, but one is not the symptom. That's powerless, you know, once you go into the symptom, you get lost in the symptom, then you take on the symptom. It's like, oh, I'm just tired, you know, or I'm just lost in thoughts. As soon as you, now be the witnesser, if I can try and say that forcefully, be the witnesser. In the witnesser, detached witnessing of tiredness, in that place, it's not mental, is the witnesser of tiredness tired? Now you'll know if you're in the, wit the detached witnessing of tiredness, that in the, in the witnesser, the witnesser isn't tired. The, it's, it's witnesses the tiredness. Now the only reason there would be confusion with this is that the witnesser is interested or hooking into the tiredness. If the witnesser is hooking into the tiredness, now go to the Go to the uh, witnesser of the witnesser. So this witnesser is hooking into tiredness. Well, what's witnessing the semi-detached witnesser? Does any tiredness exist there? Don't do this mentally. Um, also, no, all right, another way to unhook from tiredness is to know that there might be fluctuations, you know, slightly more tired, slightly less tired, slightly more tired. So if there's any flux in the symptoms, what's witnessing or observing the flux. Because that which witnesses change is the witnesser of something that's subtly changing. Can that be changing? Be in the witnesser. If you're, if you're hooking in or attaching, if something is just so invested into hooking in, it wants to wallow and, and, and attach and be that, then be the witnesser of that energy that wants to hook in. What witness is the thing that wants to get in there and be time? So as you do this, know, you know like St. Francis said, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. Now, when you start to go into the cloud and start to be interested in the cloud, you, it's like your experience becomes I'm a cloud. But that's not the right direction. The witnesser of the cloud is the witnesser of tiredness, tired. And if it is, if it is hooked into tiredness, what's witnessing that one? So now you're going from rather than into. Go back into the into consciousness, not out into the the realm of objects. So if this has been done correctly, you'll now be in the pure when you're in the pure observer, the illusions tend to vanish when you're in the pure observer. Because the only reason tiredness exists is because something is feeding it with attention and meaning. When, when, some, when the attention is withdrawn and the meaning is withdrawn and there's no need to hook into that, they disappear. Because when nothing is interesting, you don't, you don't notice, you don't experience that which is, which is not interesting or meaningful in consciousness. If you're not interested in time, time disappears. If you're not interested in your body, the body disappears. If you're not interested in your mental story, your mental story disappears. So what remains? What remains after the interest and investment in the limited passing realm uh, goes? What's left? And, uh, you know, fear may come up, but that fear is from the limited. It doesn't come from the infinite.